Okay, action by thought take two. I tried it a minute ago with my camera and the battery died. So I will try this again. Subject being this time today, sinister. I was listening to a David Jeremiah video earlier, a uh, sermon, and this was part of it. He was actually talking about Russia's role in the future, uh, working up toward the tribulation period and all. It was a really good sermon. Uh, if I could remember the heading, I would give it to you. But right now I don't. But anyway, sinister. They've, I've kind of played with the letters a little bit. Sin, I, stir. And I apologize for all the scratching. My skin's a little dry today. Anyway, uh, sinister definition. Giving the impression that something harmful or evil is happening or will happen. Uh, example sentence is there was something sinister about that murmuring voice it's evil or criminal uh, just within the definition and the, just the thought on that word on the uh, think about it it's just exactly what Satan does although while he's doing it he's giving an allure that that sin that he's trying to entice you to is fun and exciting and in all reality it may be until because they're still uh, it would be fun and exciting on a very short season because there's always always no exception there's always a catch in the end there's always trouble at the end uh, there is no such thing as a fruitful life a giving back to society life that is in full of sin. It's just not the way God created the world to be. Uh, if you think about it, what are the, the masses interested in? And what I'm, all I mean is like uh, there's several actors or sports stars or whatever they are that are known as Hollywood bad boys. Big screen bad boys, girls as well. Late, uh, uh, somehow or other, to me, it seems like, at least in years past, but I think it still applies today, uh, the boys are generally lit in that bad boy category. The girls sometimes too are absolutely referred to as sinister. And I think, this is just me, my opinion, but I think a lot of that may be uh, maybe the girls are a little bit more bold about what they're doing than the guys are. Brave, bold, whatever you want to call it. Up front. Uh, seems like a lot of guys are doing things, but they do it in a method to still, for some people, to, to trick them, basically, and make them think they're something they're not. And it seems like Anyway, that's just opinion part of things. Uh, all the while, it seems like the more good guys and good girls, uh, both, that are more level-headed, the ones that the reputation is, that's one of the good ones, they are trustworthy, they are this, they're that. They're just good folks, but in a lot of public arenas, they're also kind of left in the dust uh, at least it feels like it for a lot of them because nobody's interested in what they're doing they are you know what's going on with them because it's not newsworthy especially I did a post uh, blog the last one or one before that something like that talking about the uh, extreme that went from sports, extreme sports, which was what I saw of it, was like motocross where they're jumping and then they went to the even extreme of that and they started doing stunts while they're 30, 40, 50 foot in the air. Uh, and then it went into everything, the news media, extreme reporting, every part, every walk of life, thinking extreme. Well, when you get into that kind of extreme, you also ties right into this with uh, 
getting busy with it to try to outdo the other one and you're still those people that in that are still sidetracking God and church and per, in pursuit of reputation status money power um, and if you think about it I'm going backpedal here just a little bit in a way if you look all the way back to Genesis, Adam and Eve, the serpent of Satan, who all he had to do was entice for the eating of the forbidden fruit. Some people ask why was the the tree of good and knowledge even in the Garden of Eden? Why did God have put that there? He put it there because he wants us to have a choice. He does not want flesh and blood bone robots he doesn't want us to be forced he wants us to want to know him to love him to live for him uh, and to receive the blessings that come from that and to uh, encourage others into a walk with him or at least after the forbidden fruit anyway uh, because at that point of course he already had the plan God did to because he knew what we were going to do uh, we as people uh, but the point as far as the sinister side so far, and the serpent all he had to do was slightly reword it and uh, entice uh, make it sound good like that church quote unquote that I was talking about a minute ago that some of their little phrases are in it's on TV commercials it's on uh, it's on the wall at Brave Games uh it's just not quite right and all the serpent had to do was is it really that and reword it just slightly put extra word in or take a word out and it makes it very it's uh like i said in the the blog the ways of satan are sinister wrapped in a seductive package of spoken partial truths with just one or two words changed the problem with that is a partial truth is a big fat lie all day long. I mean, we can you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig, and it's still going to squeal. Uh, a lie is a lie, whether it's full-blown and blatant or trickery with partial in there and just enough to make it sound good, but it's not. How do we know when it's not? personal Bible study in the Holy Bible, prayer, church, uh, God-fearing Bible preaching church. Uh, I will say if you go to a church that's, or if you go to a church or in your, and in your Bible and in small groups or whatever and you never under conviction, I would start by looking at yourself. I did with myself. Are you the problem, or is the church, the preacher, the Sunday school teacher, whatever, are they the problem? Or both. All of it. One way or the other, the you've got to get in God's Word. That's the only way for that fruit inspection to know whether they're within proper Scripture or not and delivering it properly. Uh one of the things so far as how these mud waters got muddied and i kind of look at it as a medium speed mudslide meaning it what didn't necessarily just get kind of creep but kind of didn't like i said about the baseball practice uh and now teams of all ages practice on wednesday and a lot on sunday uh and it does interfere with church it does interfere and when it interferes with church Eventually, you wind up out of church, and then you wind up out of your Bible, then no prayer, and then suddenly at some point, maybe it's when you get married and have kids, and hopefully you decide to raise your kids in a Christian church, uh, but then you feel like you might need to go to church again for your family. But if your mentality is in that, I might need to do that, then you could well, with 
today and some of the churches out there that are just trying to massage your ego, make you feel better. If you're not under conviction at some point, actually praying to be convicted of it and praise God that he does put the Holy Spirit there for us to be convicted of that puts us closer to God if we'll listen repent and turn from those ways that we were convicted of or turn to ways that we're not do- whatever the conviction is it's either we're doing something or we're not doing something or maybe it's in thought but just like the title of this YouTube and the blog is action by thought because we got we think it before we do it we got to change that stinking thinking uh, because if it's not God oriented it is stinking thinking but we at some point we're going to show what we think in our actions uh, but when you if with the scenario I set up if you go to church after a long time out of church And today there's so many preaching what sounds good, what sounds like Bible, but there's something off, something wrong. And it's a really dangerous thing to be, a really dangerous place to be. I did not put this scripture in the blog, so I don't have anything to look it up on, but I do know that teachers and preachers of the Word, leaders within the Word, are held to a higher standard because even by God because they are there to encourage Christians to grow Christians and then within the outreach and getting getting into the community and growing people pulling people to Christ but they're pulling some are pulling with the wrong information uh, and there's a lot of people fooled thinking different things for one the churches that think you have to work to go to heaven salvation is by through God's grace through faith in Jesus and at that point when you have surrendered your life to a life for Christ the works come along with it because you want to encourage people to Christ you want to grow in Christ you want to pursue that relationship with him and get closer very similar to a boy chase girl they get married have family but in the process they're growing closer together because you're pursuing that you're looking for a closer relationship with your wife with your husband man and woman married for life as it shows as it says in the Bible and these churches that are preaching the feel good gospel and the works get you to heaven gospel there is absolutely nothing we can do to earn that it is a gift from God and it's there for you. Yes, you, the one hiding behind the column back there, the one looking in your lap because you don't want to make eye contact because something's resonating, but you don't know whether you want to change or not. And for the record, I've been that guy. Uh, you have a choice. It, and refu- rejecting God is not no I do not want God in my life rejecting God is just simply not accepting that free gift through grace it's not that you don't believe in God it's that you're not accepting it you know somebody reaches out with their hand to hand you a you know would you like a free gift would you like a present uh, no thank you that is a reject it's not a rude reject in that instance but but it is a reject but when you reject God that way you're still on the road to hell we decide our eternity our a our uh, forever home permanent home as in heaven or hell 
by the decisions that we make here on earth while we're alive as human fouled of uh, not fouled that too but uh, sinful human beings once we're dead and gone that's too late there is no no changing the destination then destination heaven or hell uh, for Christians our destination is heaven our purpose here on this earth is to serve Christ and evangelize and pull, uh, encourage people into the faith of Christ. Uh, if you're, if we're not seeking God in His conviction through the Holy Spirit, there is a sinister spirit within. That does not mean that you are have ill intent or that you know that you're going to go commit felonies or you know whatever else whatever crimes or just being mean or whatever it is it simply means that there is a deception there that you don't uh intended or not you are listening to the devil's wiles you're trying to look into your own self look at your own interests and that is sinister because that will send whoever's doing it to a devil's hell burning torment forever we can't look in to ourselves we are the heart is deceitful uh, and God is steady and permanent and truth he is true uh, I'm going to read one of them the, that's why Jesus told us the first John 4 1 there's that one Jeremiah 14 14 and Matthew 7 6 uh, 7 16 I'm going to read John first John 4 1 beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world uh, I will read Matthew 7 16 you'll know them by their fruits do men gather grapes for, from thorn bushes or figs from thistles in other words you can't seek a life with God when you're in the middle of harmful activity the two don't mix God is not the author of confusion if you're confused about your salvation go talk to a local preacher fingers do the walk in again type it down here I'll be glad to discuss things with you and show you what the Bible says about what your question is and if I can't answer it I'll find somebody that can uh, so far as the church attendance and Bible study attendance small group all that you can look at it this way and one of the first examples that most everybody goes to is athletes but they cannot keep their skills up and grow their skills hone those skills without practicing without playing but they must remain coachable Michael Jordan was asked uh, in an interview a long time ago uh, what he felt like his greatest asset to his success as a basketball player was and without hesitation he said I was coachable if you think you know it all you're going backwards there's no sitting still because you won't listen to anybody you're not coachable you're not teachable and the Bible is the living Word of God the same passage one person to another person it's the same truth but many parts of that same truth and for example a roughneck railroader for example or the biker or whatever you want to call it whatever description you want uh, there's Let's forget the description. That can get a little confusing. One person needs to hear about the love of God. Another person needs to hear about the wrath of God. And one person needs to hear both. Not everybody is in the same spot spiritually. Therefore, the Bible, God's Word, enlightens them where they are. That's how one of the, re the ways that God gets us to us where we are. Who's going to seek Jesus if they're not under conviction? 
because they're happy-go-lucky lives. Here we go, and everything's good. But when you you figure out that there's something more, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you are in a church where the Sunday school teacher, the preacher, whoever, whatever leader within the church, but especially the amps, the ones in those leadership roles, are not preaching or either not preaching the Bible or maybe they just said something oops they said it wrong uh, go to them privately take scripture with you or if you don't know how to find it but you just think it was wrong go talk to them they'll be glad to talk to you if they've got any salt to them at all biblically and y'all can go through the Bible together if need be and find out the truth not find out whether you're right or he's right or you're wrong or he's wrong find the truth it's not about who's right and wrong it's about the truth God's truth God is truth uh, I mean, so far as the churches and the denominations look at how many today are allowing things to go on that are sinful and some that are complete abominations to God I know churches heard of churches that are allowing gay weddings or gay preachers or they're and they're celebrating that and that is an absolute abomination to God. Uh, I don't have the scripture for that right here in front of me, but it's uh, not hard to find. And again, if you question what I'm saying, absolutely, please question it. Put it in there. I'll pull the scripture out and uh, we'll see what the truth, what the Bible says uh, like I said the scripture is the living word living word meaning what I was just talking about that in one scripture in one passage uh, it's not even just two people I've any of us that have been in church for any kind of time and actually in our Bible we read the same passage the same scripture and we get something completely different from one time to the next it's like it just jumps off the page you know why didn't I see this before well you didn't see it before because God didn't have you ready for that before or in my belief my thinking the maybe God held that one back from you for a time until he was ready for you to use that and maybe you needed maybe I needed to grow in my Christian life, in my walk with Him, so that I would know how to do it. There's knowledge, and then there's wisdom, both through the, excuse me, Holy Spirit. And then we're expected to be boots on the ground and live it. In the Middle East, where the Bible was written, uh, or in that region, anyway. I don't know if that, anyway in that region and I think this still holds today when you learn something new the expectation in life is that you live that that you learned it's not like you have you're supposed to be convinced of it or coached into it or whatever you're expected to live out what you've learned uh, and I will be honest I have had in recent a change of outlook for me in recent weeks months uh, with all the craziness that is in this world today and just, I'm not even going to start but uh, everybody knows what's going on uh, and if you don't just turn your TV on to the news and you'll see plenty of it look on social media you'll see plenty of it uh, my thought has been and honestly to a point still is with all this craziness worries me about my kids and my upcoming grandkids and uh, family and the stuff that will be potentially going through because of the things that are going on I mean, one of them being everything's fair game except Christianity and then they want to make a problem out of it uh, but the conviction that I've had in recent weeks is I've got work to do. We've got work to do as Christians. Uh, we've got to get the word out. We need to get people, anybody we see, 
under conviction of God for the witnessing, but your life should be a witness in itself. But Luke 10, 2. Then he said to them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Matthew 9, 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers are few. Luke 10, 3. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Matthew 9.38 Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Obvious point. There's not a whole lot of... Uh, the, the number of Christians to the number of uh, non-Christians, non-believers. And even at that, the Christians that are willing to get out there and talk to people, witness to people, evangelize, outreach. Christians, pray, pray, pray for God's guidance in your life and then live it out. The Bible says multiple times, and there's a lot more verses than what I printed or copied and pasted onto this. There's a whole, literally a whole world out there that needs to meet Jesus personally. And we are it, Christians, the saints of God. That's biblical as well, and again, I don't have that on the thing. The Great Commission, Matthew twenty-eight sixteen through 20. And I will just read the red letter part of it, which is what Jesus himself said, uh, which is, starts at Matthew twenty-eight eighteen through 20. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore... Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I just said to go out and do those things that he's done because he, it's in the Bible. It's, we can read it. We know what he did. Disciples witnessed it. Uh, and he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The end of the age means get to the, the last days, to the tribulation period, and up to the millennium. Uh, join me, please, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior to the world. His intention is to the world. All of us. Yes, that means you. All of us that will surrender our lives to him. And he wants that to be every single person on the planet. He, the Bible, he, that's what he wants. That's what God wants. But he also knows that everybody's not going to choose him. The free gift of God's grace and mercy through faith in Jesus Christ to our sinful world since Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. If sin had started there, we wouldn't be in this mess. And if you actually look, there's one thing I didn't forgot to put on the, the blog that I'll mention here. ISIS and those things that are happening today, the terrorism that ISIS is represents and all. Uh, I don't have the lineage in front of me, but that works back all the way to, if I've got my characters correct, Isaac, Abraham's son, where Sarah and they were promised a son promised a child at the very least. I don't remember if it was specifically son. I think it was because he was going to be, to be the ruler of the nations and they doubted God's promise. He had a baby with one of the concubines, Isaac. Again, if I've got the name correct, but the story, the, the fact is, the happening is, and uh, God said that the descendants would be a thorn in our side. And that's one more thorn. ISIS and those things that go with it, those people that go with it, those the ill intent, the terrorism, all that is linked there. And if somebody wants further on there, and maybe at some point I will anyway, but uh, I can show that lineage. I just have to do a little work to do it. If you haven't received Christ as personal Lord and Savior, I would be honored to talk, whether it's in texting, let your fingers do the talking, or uh, 
if you're not from around here, I can we can figure out a way to actually talk. Uh, and if you would like to be more a little bit more private with it, investigate Jesus on yourself. I don't know if you got access to a Bible or not, but there are places, uh, motels, uh, maybe churches, but they could probably get you to a, a local Gideon, get, find a Gideon Bible. And the reason I'm pointing out pushing the Gideon Bible is in the front, it's got different things that we all deal with in life and scripture showing what God says about it and how to be helped there. And in the back, there are there's the Romans Road to Salvation in Christ is in the back of the Gideon Bible. Uh, doctor's offices, a lot of them have a Gideon Bible there. Uh, and best I know, every Gideon Bible has those things front and back. Uh, and if you read the... I'm going to have this... If you look up action by thought dot blog, uh, I've got the Bible way to heaven, basically a part section of the Roman road and enough of it to lead you through the plan of salvation. It's in the blog. It's at the very bottom. But that is all for this time. And Christ, I love every one of you. Best of all, God loves you. That is the main point. Yes, you and you and you and you and you you that don't feel worthy well the truth is we're not none of us are that's why it's a free gift you don't do anything to earn it you just receive it and what's there to lose uh, if you would if you like this video or in the blog like share and subscribe it's free to you it helps the channel and it helps spread the word anyway love you much and i'll talk to you on the next one